Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to try our hand at another catalytic converter here. Now, the first catalytic converter I tried out a couple weeks ago, um, a lot of you guys left messages and comments saying that uh, it didn't have any platinum in it or palladium because it was an aftermarket cat or a pre cat. Um, and so I've decided to go and try another one. Um, so let me uh, get this one prepped and cut in half so we can get at that. Uh, honeycomb where all the precious metals are and then we'll take it over and smelt it and see how we come out. So here's an up close look at our cap and I'm not sure what car this is from but I'm going to pull off these heat shields here and see if we can find a number and maybe that'll help us identify what cat this is from and then we can maybe get an idea of how much precious metals are in this thing. All right, we pulled off our heat shield here, and uh, there's no numbers on this thing anywhere that I could find. And so I'm hoping you guys can help me identify this cat, uh, but more importantly, if it has any precious metals or not. And so leave me a comment below and let me know if you think this is a good one or a bad one, um, and maybe what kind of car it came off of. But now what I'll do is I'll just take our plows and I'll just cut it right down the middle and get that, that uh, honeycomb out of the middle that has the, the precious metals in it and we'll scrap the rest of this thing. Stick yeah, that's the good stuff. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, here's our stuff we're after. This is where all the precious metals are, and they're um, bonded kind of all to the outside of this honeycomb or grid pattern we have here. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this and crush it down to a pretty fine powder and we're going to try and smelt it down and see if we can recover the metals. Um, kind of the holy grail of this would be to not use any collector metal and just crush it down, mix it with some flux in a crucible, pour it and get a little platinum or palladium bead. Um, so that's the test we'll try first, see how that goes. Um, but then I also want to test recovery and so I'm going to do another test after that with a lead collector metal and probably a third test uh, with a copper collector metal, and then we can compare all three results. I'll be using 100 grams of crushed up catalytic converter, and I'll be using for our flux recipe, I'm gonna be using 150 grams of lye, 100 grams of borax, and 50 grams of silica sand. And by making our flux basic, hopefully it will um, eat up this ceramic um, kind of honeycomb stuff that the platinum's uh, bonded to, and that'll free up the platinum to be collected in the bottom of our smelt. So um, we'll try those and see how it goes here. All right, I'm gonna take the stuff, I'm just gonna crush it up with a hammer, and hopefully we can get some of it kind of knocked off into this bin here. There you go. So that's kind of how it comes apart. And oh, just for reference, um, I have uh, I have about 1.65 kilograms of this stuff. So I have I have quite a bit of this stuff to play with. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna work through at uh, 100 gram increments until we get a good recipe we like. Ooh. A little bigger hammer here. All right, before we go much farther, um, this stuff is pretty damp. Um, so I'm going to put it in our frying pan and get it on our furnace and just dry it out and get some of this moisture out of here. I think it'll help it crush up better and crush up finer. Thank <laughs> you. 
So in a previous video, we were having a little bit of trouble getting all the ceramic to dissolve in the flux. And uh, the last three smelts we've done here, it's all completely dissolved. The crucible still looks really pretty good. Um, and so I think we're, we got a good recipe for, for flux. Um, and now we just got to figure out if our collector metal is doing its job. And uh, if so, which one does the best job? All right, we've got our little lead button here. And we're going to put it in the furnace and cupel the lead away and be left with our platinum and palladium. Um, and I'm going to take the furnace right to the limit. It's working its way up to 2200 degrees. Um, I'm going to cupel this at a way high temperature because I think uh, on our previous video, we cupelled it at a pretty low temperature and it ended up being about two thirds lead and a third palladium. And so uh, the theory is, is if you get it hot enough, the higher you get it, the less lead you're going to get because that alloy with the precious metals is going to have uh, a higher melting point the closer you get to the platinum palladium. So we want to get as high, as hot as we can to cupel so that we can get as much lead out as possible. All right, so we'll take our precious metal alloy here, put it in our cupelling oven. And that's going to melt and all the lead oxide is going to absorb into that. Magnesia Cupel. All right, here's our third one. This has the copper collector in it. Oh, and there's our collector now at the bottom. Let me knock it out of there and see what we got. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can get it cleaned up a little bit here. Well, there we go. There's our co copper. So let me knock some of that slag off and we'll see what we got. All right, I'm going to add about 45 grams of lead to our copper. Um, that'll be about a one to four ratio. Uh, and But I think at these high temperatures, we'll be able to cupel the lead and copper away uh, with, uh, with that higher ratio, that four to one. All right, one guy left me a comment and said that I wanted to be careful because platinum and palladium will actually dissolve in real caustic, hot caustic stuff like lye um, if you get it way hot, like 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so he suggested I try a smelt with just borax and silica sand. Um, and so while this lead and uh, copper is cupelling away, I'm going to add uh, 50 grams of this catalytic converter. I'm going to use 150 grams of borax and 75 grams of silica. Smelt it down, I'll add 20 grams of collector again and see what happens. All right, we'll throw in 16.1 grams of lead. All right, here's our slag from our borax and silica sand only flux. And it's really, really glassy, really, really acidic. You can see the, uh, the, the little hole there where it kind of sucks down in the middle. That's very characteristic of an acidic slag. Um, and it also seems to shatter like this when it cools down. Um, so let's tip it over and see what we got uh, for our lead collector. All right. There we go. So there's the there's the point. There's our lead in there. Get it broken out of there and see what we got. There we go. And here's our lead button afterwards with the borax, and we got 16.24. So we got uh, 0.14 grams more than we started with. All right, guys, so I'm sitting here brainstorming uh, while my leads keep pelling away in the furnace. And um, I've got a couple different options here I wanted to go over with you guys, just kind of, like I say, just a brainstorm session. Um, it seems like the lead is really hard to get completely out of the platinum and palladium. And again, I kind of mentioned this earlier. I think what happens is as you increase the percentage of platinum and palladium in your button in the cupel furnace, the melting point keeps going up and up and up and up because pure platinum and palladium have a really high melting point. 
um, and lead the the lead in there keeps the melting point low. Um, but then as you remove the lead, that melting point rises, 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 and then it solidifies, and you still have about half your lead in there. Um, so that's not really what we want. We want those pure precious metals. Um, copper would be a good solution where instead of using lead as a collector, you could use copper and then electro win the copper away. Um, so that would be an option. Then take your slimes from your electro winning cell, smelt them again, and you should have pure platinum and palladium. But then again, you essentially have the same problem. You have this fine platinum palladium dust, just like we have off our cat catalytic converters that you got to form into a metal button somehow. So uh, the idea of copper works well, but the, the final product, you still need it collected all down into a, into a metal. Um, so I have this thought, if we used either silver as a collector metal, um, you have a valuable metal that you could probably sell to a refiner and get paid for and not get dinged on. So you could get your silver price back as well as your um, platinum palladium. But the other option is if you use lead as a collector, then you can uh, take it, put it in the furnace, you pelt as much lead away as you can, and then essentially in court with silver. So you add, uh, you know, maybe 10 grams of silver that uh, will keep the melting point of the bead low, but then you can cupel the rest of that lead out and you'll be left with uh, silver and platinum palladium bead that you can then sell to a refiner. And the only reason you wouldn't use silver as a collector metal is um, it, some may get lost a little bit in the slag. Um, I did a video years ago using silver as a collector and I didn't lose very much, but there was definitely some silver that assayed out um, in the slag. So uh, right now, those are kind of my thoughts. Wanted to share them with you. And, uh, you know, sometimes it helps talk out loud with someone. Um, so I think right now we'll figure out how much platinum and palladium we're getting back from our lead and our copper collector. And, uh, and then I might try adding some silver uh, and seeing if I can pull the rest of that lead out uh, of the bead and get it zapped with our XRF gun and see if we can get a pure silver uh, PGM bead with no lead in it. All right, guys, well, here's our button from the lead collector. And it actually looks pretty good. Um, it looks metallic. It doesn't look mossy like our previous uh, buttons from our previous video. So hopefully we got most of the lead out of here and we have just our platinum and or palladium in there. Um, so let me pull it out of there, get it weighed, and we'll see how much metal we recovered compared to the, the first smelt. So it looks like we recovered almost a third of a gram. So hopefully there's not a lot of lead in there, and that's mostly precious metals. But that's a third of a gram from 100 grams of catalytic converter. All right, guys, so here is a comparison between our lead collector with sodium hydroxide, or lye, and uh, the lead collector with just borax and silica sand, and see if we lost any. Um, but remember, we used 100 grams of catalytic converter here and only 50 grams here. So if these come out to be the same percent recovery, this one should be about twice what this bead is. So this first one that we used the, the lie with comes out to be 0.31 or so, um, depending on the wind. So there's with lie. And so this one should be about 15 and a half uh, or 0.15 grams. And it looks like it's 0.18. So we actually did seem to recover a little bit more by not using the sodium hydroxide, which is kind of interesting. All right, guys, so now we're going to compare our uh, lead collector over here to our copper collector over here. And our copper collector weighs 0.175. And these both had the same amount of catalytic converter. So we lost almost half of our precious metals here with the copper collector. Uh, and my suspicion is that using the copper actually uh, pulled a lot of the platinum and palladium into the cupel when we were uh, oxidizing it in the crucible, or in the cupel, I mean, because uh, this is actually very common with gold and silver. It will, it will pull a lot of the 
uh, precious metals into the cupel if you have too much copper. So that's my uh, what I expect happened with that one. Um, and so now that we've done all of our experiments, it looks like the best recovery we get is using a lead collector um, and a acidic flux with not much lye or no lye and just borax and silica sand. And the cool thing was is that even with the borax and the silica sand, we got a total decomposition of the catalytic converters. So we don't actually need the lye in there to eat up that uh, ceramic um, honeycomb. All right, guys, one last quick experiment here before we get into production. Um, I'm going to take 100 grams of the catalytic converter and mix them with 300 grams of just straight borax, smelt it down. I'm going to add some lead and see if we can just have a real nice 3 to 1 ratio of borax and converter honeycomb and see how much recovery we can get. I think the last one we did uh, had about 0.14 grams recovered from 50 uh, grams of converter. So if we're somewhere in the 0.3 grams, um, we should be doing pretty good. 18.36 grams of lead. So hopefully we get 18.66 or so and we're done. And here's our button afterwards and it's just right on perfect, 18.64 grams. So the borax at uh, three to one ratio works pretty good. All right guys, so I made a little screw up here. Uh, it had been a couple days since filming the last two takes. And so my memory wasn't very good. And uh, I said we needed a 0.14 when really we needed about a 0.18. So uh, the recovery was actually a little bit less with just the pure borax, but I left it in here to make this point um, I don't think that the recovery would be much affected at all by uh, the addition or reduction of silica because it's an acidic flux. It didn't make it any more fluid or, or less fluid. Um, and so then it got me thinking about the amount of surface area that's exposed to the collector metal. And the, the test where I did had the highest recovery, which was the uh, silica and borax that didn't have any soda in it. It was only 50 grams of material, and so the surface area of the collector metal versus the height of the column in that crucible was, was much less. And so the material had a lot more contact with the, with the collector metal and maybe got us a little bit higher recovery. So now I'm kind of concerned that the problem we're having isn't necessarily with a flux uh, recipe, but it's more with the amount of surface area of your collector metal and the amount of time that it's left in the furnace to uh, react with itself and, and have all that platinum come down and react with the collector metal. So um, I, there's still a lot more work to be done, but let's go ahead and continue with the video now and we'll see how it turns out in the end. All right guys, now that we've got everything set, we're gonna do a bigger smelt. This is the number 10 crucible. I've got 300 grams of converter in here and 900 grams of borax. And I could probably do 400 and 1200. Um, but this is all I got crushed up right now, so I'll get this started.
All right, guys, I'm going to sacrifice this one ounce uh, round here. This is 99.9% uh, .9 silver, and I'm going to use it to try and get rid of all the lead in our little beads. And the leftover should be uh, pure silver with a little bit of platinum and palladium in it. So I'm going to put this in a cupel, get it molten, and then I'm going to take our lead beads and our little platinum beads that we have, put it in there and drive off all the lead that we can, and we should be left with pretty much pure silver and a little bit of platinum and palladium. All right, guys, here's our cupel. And I'm going to put our beads from previous smelts in there. And then I'm going to place our coin right on top and put that back in the furnace. And we'll let that go and cupel for a while. And then when I get the lead knocked out of the, the big smelt we just did, I'll add that to it and drive all the lead out and see what we're left with. Let's take a look at our lead and silver here. And there it's going. It might be kind of hard to see there, but the lead on top is cupelling away. There's a little bit of junk on there on the left-hand side. Might be a little uh, iron contamination or something, but we'll let that go and let all that lead oxidize and see what we're left with. Here's our silver bead after uh, the cupel process is finished, and I've, I've read about these but I've never actually seen them. So these little guys here are, they're called silver sprouts. And when your bead has a really high percentage of silver in it, as it cools, these, these little, they're like little trees. These little silver sprouts shoot out of the, the silver button as it cools. Um, so I've never, I've never seen those before, but that's what those are. Um, so let me get this pulled out of here. We'll get it weighed and we'll get it uh, zapped with our XRF gun and we'll see what metals we have in here. All right, so I'm just going to take a little piece of emery cloth here and clean up our silver bead a little bit and get it so it's nice fresh metal on the surface for the XRF gun. Okay, there we go. It's not perfect, but it's cleaned up and got some of that junk off the surface. Um, so hopefully we can get a good XRF reading on our, on our metal here. So I'm also going to take some of our slag and get it zapped with the XRF as well. And this is our uh, no collector metal slag. And this was the first one I did with uh, sodium hydroxide um, rich slag. And so we'll see if there's any metals in that. Here's some slag with the lead collector. This was the second one I did. And here's a sample of the slag that I did at the very end with just using borax. All right, guys. So was it a success? We recovered uh, some palladium. There wasn't any platinum in there. There was a surprisingly high amount of tantalum in there. Uh, I was not expecting that, and I can't find anything where they were using tantalum in any catalytic converter. So help me out there. Is that, uh, where'd the tantalum come from? Um, the other thing though that's encouraging is there wasn't any uh, rare metals in our slag, no uh, platinum or palladium. Um, so I think we're recovering most of it in our metal. It looks like if you look really close at the numbers, the lead collector with the high uh, sodium hydroxide slag worked the best. It has the least amount of metals in it. Uh, the no collector uh, did the next best and then the borax did the worst because actually in the borax, if you looked at the bottom, uh, there is actually a palladium reading in there. So we, it looks like we lost a little bit of palladium in the, in the borax only smelt. That all being said, you want to be really, really careful when you're uh, looking at glasses or non-metal objects with the XRF because it doesn't give you the true weight percent because there's so much silica in there and uh, um, other things that the XRF can't read. It's not a true weight percent. So it just gives you the, the percent compared to the other metals in there. And so we really don't know how much we lost, but anytime you get 
a uh, metal showing up on the XRF reading, uh, even if it's in a glassy slag or something, you know you've lost some, but we can't do any calculations to exactly how much we lost. The metal button we recovered weighed right around 33 grams. And so when you do the back calculation, it looks like we ended up with a little over uh, a gram of palladium, about 1.3 grams for that whole catalytic converter. I was hoping for more. What do you guys think? Is that is that what you expected um, based on where the catalytic converter came from? Um, you guys have a lot more experience with how much precious metal should be on those things than I do. So going forward, what's the next step? Um, I I'm really not quite satisfied yet. Um, I, I think going forward, my next step is gonna be to take some catalytic converter and I'm gonna stick with our uh, high sodium hydroxide flux. I'm gonna use silver as a collector metal. I'm gonna put it right in the crucible. I'm not gonna use any lead and see if uh, we can use silver and then you just get the silver button and you're done. You don't have to cupel anything, which would be nice. I'm gonna increase the amount of silver we use for the collector so we can have a large, larger surface area of metal for the charge to react with when it's molten. And I think that will help increase the percent recovery um, of, our, of our precious metals, our platinum and our palladium. The third thing I'm gonna do on our next experiment, whenever that is, is I'm gonna actually take the slag from our smelts and send it off for assay from a professional assayer so that they can tell us exactly how much uh, platinum and palladium and some of these other rare metals that we're, we're losing. Um, and that, that way we can actually come up with a percent recovery. All right guys, so here's the plan for my next experiment. I'm really pretty excited about this. Uh, I've been emailing back and forth with a guy who has lots and lots of these ceramic beads from a catalytic converter in his uh, industrial process that he's been using. And these are the spent beads when they replaced them. And he's got them assayed and they assay uh, over an, uh, 1% platinum. Um, and so he's, he sent me up the sample and he's gonna let me play with it and see if I can recover the platinum out of this stuff. So this is gonna be my next video. And that's what these two catalytic converters have been kind of leading up to uh, the two previous videos is once I figure out the process, I can actually take the, the material here, these beads, and process them down and hopefully recover the platinum. So again, this is a little sneak peek um, for our next video. Hopefully we, uh, we can start with this one here in the next couple of weeks. And again, I'm gonna use uh, silver as a collector and uh, high sodium hydroxide flux and get the slag assayed. And hopefully we can get a really pretty high recovery of platinum off of these beads for this guy. I'm gonna be really interested to hear from you guys on what you think and what you think I can do to improve the process. I really wanna try and get as high a recovery of precious metals as possible. And uh, you guys might have some really good ideas for me. So leave me a comment in the comment section below, or you can email me. Uh, my contact information is in the description below. And again, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. Uh, this is a fun process. I don't know of anybody else on YouTube that's trying to smelt these things down. There's a lot of chemical recovery videos out there. Uh, but if you guys, like I say, have any suggestions on how to uh, Im improve the, the process of smelting these catalytic converters, uh, please let me know. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.